Moving to the other side of the world is going to change your life. But how exactly is it going to do that? Now, I've talked to you before about habits that you're going to lose when you move to Australia. But what about the ones that you're going to learn, pick up? What do you actually, how do you acquire new habits? G'day guys, my name is Ross and I moved with my family to Australia during a global pandemic. And the first habit I picked up when I moved here was kind of a shock to the system. I mean, I know it didn't help that I moved here during COVID and I was stuck in enforced hotel quarantine with jet lag and a toddler. But when you move to Australia, you're going to start to wake up earlier. Coming from somewhere like the UK or anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere, you might be used to sleeping in like some kind of hibernating animal, particularly in the winter. But in a country that doesn't generally have the cold extremes like we do, I know people always keep telling me off because I say that Australia is hot when apparently it isn't hot all of the time particularly if you live down south there I said it well in Australia for some unbeknownst reason to me they love getting up early maybe it's something to do with the beautiful bird calls that start at about four in the morning lovers or it could be something to do with the vividly bright sunrises god they are beautiful or maybe it's the fact that you get this nagging thought in your head that if you leave any chores to do by midday it's going to be absolutely bakingly hot unless you live down south for anyone that ever has a go at me for making wildly sweeping statements for how hot australia is and apparently it's not all like that but you go and live a winter in the uk you'll definitely see the difference and you won't want to wake up early now this next habit could be the reason why you would definitely consider waking up early because even if you feel a little bit tired when you wake up you'll want to reach for that dark liquid taste so good. In Australia, coffee is amazing. I've only been able to find one type of coffee that is absolute crap, and that's the medium roast in Aldi, which ironically is more expensive than the cheaper one, which tastes better. I even threw the other one out, I couldn't drink it. It's the only one in Australia that I've found that is absolutely terrible. And before you ask, I won't even go into Starbucks. Coffee in Australia is so good that you'll wanna just do it all of the time. It's cheap, it's sociable. And when you realize that you've woken up too early and you've got that sunshine in your eyes and the plovers in your ears, getting a couple of coffees down here just make everything all right. Now this might seem that I'm ragging on a little bit about Australia and believe me, I love it here. And it's very difficult for me to get away from my whinging pom roots. But when you make such a big change in your life to move to the other side of the world, this new habit that you're gonna pick up is probably down to the fact that you're gonna wanna make a fresh start. And avoiding negative people, especially those whinging poms that you used to be around so often is going to be a fantastic new habitual choice. Why should you put up with whinges all the time? I know that some Australians do whinge as well. If you want proof of that, just check in the comments of some of my videos. But when you've given up and sacrificed so much to move to the other side of the world, why would you want to associate yourself with so much negativity again? But in a country that's so spaced out and you're not having to live on top of as many people as you do, make wise choices with your new friends. And if there's any that you don't like, just avoid them. Now, sometimes I agree, Australia isn't always the most progressive country in the world. World. But one habit that you are going to pick up is proof that Australians and their culture was looking way into the future. And that's because when an Australian talks to you or greets you, they don't gender stereotype. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, in Australia, everyone's your mate or old mate or your buddy. But if you don't like them, want to use possibly the worst C word in Australia, just call them champ. Regardless of your gender, anyone in Australia can be these greetings, whether it's positive or subtly negative. Why risk offending someone in 2023 by presuming or incorrectly identifying their gender? How offensive would that be? Well, in Australia, you don't have to do it. With your new habit in hand, everyone's your mate. G'day, mate. Did that sound all right? How many of you have people within your friendship group, perhaps left over from school days or some club that you did but you don't do anymore? And when you think about it, you don't actually really like these people. Well, moving to the other side of the world, like Australia, which is pretty much as far away from anything as you can get, is possibly the easiest way for you to distance yourself from these people that you don't really like anymore. So this next new habit that you're gonna pick up is one of choices. And then instead of choosing friends that just end up being a bit of a dud, when you're starting from zero, you're gonna end up finding a new collection of friends and finding your tribe. It's your chance to actually look internally within yourself and think, what type of person am I? And what type of person would I like to surround myself by? Because I bet it's not a bunch of if you felt like you never really fit in in the country that you came from, I guarantee that when you move to Australia, there are going to be plenty of like-minded people like you. That's probably the reason why you wanted to move to Australia in the first place. Australian culture is incredibly unique. So find your new tribe and don't worry about putting up with the old duds. You are going to miss your old genuine friends though. That's uh, something you can't really get around. And when you found all of your new friends, you're going to pick up this habit pretty quickly or you might risk not getting invited around again. Now in many countries in the world, when you turn up at a place, you're going to be greeted by your great hosts and probably fed and watered to capacity. Now I'm not saying that this doesn't happen in Australia, but when you do go to someone's house, you are expected to bring a plate. What are you going to bring, you ask yourself? Well, that's why this is a habit. 
because rather than having the social anxiety of trying to think of something new every time that you go to someone's house, your bring a plate option is gonna be as unique to you as the very fabric of your social identity. Mine's become spring rolls. For others, it might be hot wings. Could you be the chips and dip type of person? Supplement it with your drink of choice and off you go. Because if you didn't, then you wouldn't be doing this next habit. Now I'm a father of two girls and I'm trying to raise them correctly. And if I were to ask you what would be the one thing that you'd want from your children, in my opinion, you'd want them to be grateful. Don't feel entitled to all of the things that are around. And in Australia, there are so many good things literally at your fingertips. But if you forget about how good the world can be around you and just expect it to always give you the best, then you're not really being grateful for it. Australians show gratitude to the environment by picking things up. They show gratitude to their friends and family by being so generous. They even show gratitude in literally how much you're being paid. What a wonderful world that we live in when you and everyone around you is just grateful for everything that you've got. And it becomes it's very easy to spot those people that aren't. You don't want to be one of those people. Why would you want to be ungrateful? Because in true Aussie fashion, if you're going to go around acting like that, you're going to get cast out quicker than an old thong that's lost its plug. Remember, you're coming to Australia for a new life and a new way of living. Remember to be grateful for that. How do you show that you are grateful? Are you one of these types of people that's into a single use type of society? Just go out, take what you want, and don't really care about any of the consequences. Well, I can't think of a worse embodiment of that anywhere in the world than the single use water bottle. In Australia, there's literally no point for a single use water bottle. So when you arrive here, pretty quickly you're going to figure out just to carry a water bottle. Wherever you go when you feel thirsty, there are fresh water fountains literally everywhere you look. In fact, maybe you don't even need to carry a water bottle. You can just sit there and slurp. But it's 10 times easier just filling up and walking off where you want to go. And they come in such a lovely array of colours. Don't be the reason why you're contributing to the world's pollution problem. Just buy a water bottle, mate. Buy a water bottle. Buy a water bottle. If you're coming from the UK, you're probably also going to start pronouncing your teas correctly. Now the whole process of moving to Australia can involve a lot of different things that you need to do correctly because I've lost count of the amount of people who follow this channel and have done something wrong in the process of their visa application and it's meant a whole world of problems. Now I'm not saying that those people are lazy. I'm lazy. It takes a lazy person to spot a lazy person. But if you are and you don't want to worry about any of these complications that you might have when you apply for a visa then do like we did and speak to a Mara registered visa agent like True Blue Migration Services. Sure it's pretty easy just to fill in a form, but have you seen how many forms there are? When was the last time you filled in a form and you did it exactly correctly? Wouldn't you like someone to be able to check them over? Wouldn't you like someone to be able to give you advice if you have a complicated situation? Well speak to them today on the link in the description and let them tell you for free exactly what you need to do to move to Australia. If you don't believe me, follow the hundreds of positive Google reviews, mention us and fill out their free visa assessment today at www.truebluemigration.com. I sometimes wonder why you wouldn't just let an expert tell you what you need to do for free. I'm no expert, but you're listening to me talk about Australian habits. Now coming from the UK, I don't know why we were so addicted to supermarkets. Asda, Tesco's, love a Lidl. I think Lidl will actually do really well in Australia. The one time I visited America, I even loved going into a Walmart. Now I'm not one of these people that's anti-big corporation. At the end of the day, if it's cheaper, probably gonna shop there. That's why I go to Aldi. But one habit I never had in the UK, or something I never even thought to do, was to go and shop at the local market. Sure, I'd love to support local people and buy local produce. But when those things don't really exist, anymore or they charge twice or three times as much for the same product that you could get in a supermarket why would you go there sorry mate I'm not made of money but in Australia you are gonna start shopping at your local markets when you're getting up at the crack of dawn to drink your coffee rudely <laughs> awoken by the plovers you're gonna end up going down to your local market not just because it's a nice thing to do or you're going to support your local community, but you'll actually find that a lot of the products that are there are cheaper than the big supermarkets. Woolies and Coles are literally there for convenience. They are not there to save you any money. Go down to your local markets, find out what's in season, and using your newfound habit, you're actually going to save yourself a bit of money. The only losers really are Coles and Woolies, and their posted profits last year were huge. So f them. Now as a young man, I have to admit that this next habit was not one of my priorities. It's often difficult as young men to actually talk to other people about your own mental health. Especially coming from the UK, it did feel sometimes like a bit of a taboo subject. And unfortunately for men of my own age, younger and older, the biggest risk to us dying is actually ourself. But since moving to Australia, I genuinely feel that here there is more of a push to make mental health a priority. Is it in the amount of personal leave that you can take for mental health days? Is it even the fact that when you talk about it to your new Australian friends, 
that the concept of a mental health day seemed like a no-brainer. The world is getting complicated, and every day there are more and more things to think about, and they're all going to weigh down on your mind. Ever considered perhaps a more holistic approach to dealing with anxiety and stress? Now I agree with you, sometimes I was a little bit skeptical about these things. But even if a placebo works, mate, it works. There are plenty of things in Australia that are going to help you to let go, so learn a new habit, and get ready to embrace them. But maybe living in Australia, you're not ready yet to embrace everything. And whilst walking around barefoot in many countries can be considered as a social taboo, how do you feel about walking about in barefoot in Australia? Because you'll catch people doing it everywhere. Down the street, in the park, even in the supermarket. Maybe that's actually their protest to Coles and Woolies by dirtying the floor up. Or are they just cleaning the floor with their feet. I still don't really understand it now, particularly in the height of summer, when the pavements and the tarmac is about 400 degrees, not quite as hot as a McDonald's apple pie, and people think it's a good idea to just walk around in barefoot. I did it once when I was at the beach, forgot something from my car, maybe about 50 to 100 meters away, thought it'd be a good idea rather than putting my thongs on to just scurry back and get what I needed. Now I felt free and liberal just walking around barefoot, but I kind of regretted it when it felt like the worst sunburn that I'd ever had on the soles of my feet. But you know what I've learned about the whole thing? Yeah, I'm probably gonna be stupid and do it again. Because isn't that the point? When you move to Australia, you're gonna try so many new different things and you're gonna make so many stupid mistakes, probably gonna repeat again anyway, because who cares? So the next habit that you're gonna pick up is probably the concept of broadening your horizons. Do the stuff that you never had the courage to do wherever it was that you lived before. Try new things. I started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. When I used to live in the UK, rolling around on the floor with grown men, getting choked into an array of different positions while being sweat on, I couldn't have thought of anything worse. I don't know why I wanted to do it here, but it's bloody awesome. There are so many new things that you can try in Australia. It's like they invented them here, like goon of fortune. If you want to make a successful move to Australia, don't be a no person. Be a yes person. Broaden your horizons and try that new thing with your new tribe, you never know, you might really enjoy getting sweat on, choked by balding men that could be as old as your dad. I hope I've not developed a new kink. When you want to try something new, what's the process that you go through in your mind in order to decide whether it's a good thing to do or not? Because rather than internalizing those things, in Australia you're going to do your next habit and you're going to ask a lot of rhetorical questions. Now at first when I did this and people were doing it to me, I found myself trying to answer their questions, like they were having a conversation with me. Pretty quickly in Australia, even as a form of greeting sometimes, people are just going to ask you a rhetorical question. Even the classic Australian greeting of how's it going, sometimes you don't even need to respond to that. That in itself is a rhetorical question. Even when you're not ending the sentence with a rhetorical question, you're going to make it sound like you actually are with a rising inflection. One in eight people in the world is Chinese. One in eight people is European. But I reckon if some omnipotent power were counting the amount of rhetorical questions that were asked in the world on any given day, half of them would be Australian. And if someone does genuinely want an answer to your rhetorical question, you're going to do the Australian thing and not give them the answer. Instead, you're just going to tell them what it's not. Oh, it's a hot day today, mate. Yeah, it's not bloody cold, eh? What a beautiful language. How many times have you ever seen people in the street and almost immediately cast some kind of judgment over them? Who cares what someone else is doing? Unless, you know, they're committing a crime or something. Because in Australia, as long as it's not affecting you, you're just going to let go of judgment. How much of your own energy is wasted in making judgments about other people that you're probably never really going to meet or even interact with again. It's so draining. In Australia, there are too many positive things to care about. Let everything go, learn to tolerate and accept everyone, and why judge people that aren't really going to affect you? Yes, there are plenty of Karens and Kevins in Australia that just love to have their voices heard, even if it's shouting on a keyboard or through their phone, leaving comments on my bloody videos. But who cares? If you are going to judge them, judge them positively. Judge them with a smile and a laugh. Because whilst your move to Australia might be the best thing that you've ever done, don't let someone else bring it down by having to judge them in a negative way. Go and live your best life and hope that whatever or whoever else gets in your way lives their best life too. Life's too short to go around judging people. But if you are going to judge people as soon as you meet them, then Australians do it better than anyone else in the world. How do they do it, you ask? Australians can give people some of the best nicknames you have ever heard of. Now, I don't mean just taking their name and adding an O or a Y on it. Some of the best Australian nicknames are given to people because of stupid shit that they've done or stupid shit that they've said. How do you know if an Australian likes you? Not because he called you mate. God forbid an Australian ever called you champ. Not even because an Australian called you c 
If an Australian calls you by your name with an O or a Y on the end, that's probably just because they're trying to actually remember what your name is. But you know if you've made an eternal bond with an Australian and they come up with a nickname based on something that you did together that no one else will ever understand why you're called that. And do you know how another Australian will then like you if they start calling you by that nickname too, rather than your regular name? That's probably the highest accolade in Australian society. Having a nickname that no one really understands how you got it. Isn't that just winning at life? But if you're wondering to yourself what kind of habits in Australia you're gonna lose when you move here, then watch this video. Maybe it'll make this one make more sense. See you later.